Hi, I'm Tim. In this video, we're going to talk about wing dihedral. What is wing dihedral? Why do we have it? And how does it work? We'll try to explain wing dihedral and how it is applied to your RC model airplanes, how it can help you be a better model airplane designer. And I'll show you five flight videos with a range of dihedral from a lot of dihedral to zero dihedral to polyhedral. And I'll comment on how that affects the RC model airplane. Let's get to it. In this video on um, airplane dihedral, we're going to start with a discussion of full-scale aircraft because that will give you a good feel for how it works in the real world, and then we'll apply it for how it works to model airplanes. The definition of dihedral is just two planes that come to an intersection. That is dihedral. In aviation, it always means the um, positive angle between two wing halves. In other words, this is the wing and it goes up. This is a very good example of a foam glider that I designed. And by the way, <clears throat> all the models that you see in this video, there's links in the description if you'd like to build one to see uh, where plans are for them. Notice it, there is dihedral as you're looking um, towards the front as the wings go up on either side. And with full-scale aircraft, there's many examples of dihedral. <clears throat> They're uh, present in low-wing aircraft, in high-wing aircraft, and the majority of airliners have uh, positive dihedral as well, in this case, a Boeing 777. So with aircraft, there are three axes of motion. You can have yaw, where it turns with the rudder. You can have roll, and you can have pitch. What dihedral does is a very uh, effective way to maintain stability with the roll access for aircraft. The vast majority of aircraft have dihedral. Uh, ones that don't are typically uh, aerobatic aircraft or planes that need maneuverability, such as fighters. They will have zero dihedral, in some cases negative uh, dihedral, which is called anhedral. But for most um, aircraft that we would fly, uh, transport aircraft, uh, Cessnas, things like that, you'll have positive uh, dihedral, and the same for your RC model aircraft, with the exception of aerobatic models. So in a nutshell, the reason we have dihedral is to provide built-in stability about the roll axis. Now, how does dihedral work? It can get fairly complicated when you get into a discussion of aerodynamics. What I'll do is try to give you a simple explanation. Joke here, <clears throat> it'll be enough to get you through your job interview if you become an airline pilot, if somebody asks you how does dihedral um, affect an airplane. So what will happen is, when I'll use this um, Quilo's model of the Aronka right here. Whenever a plane is flying along straight and level, the wind is coming here, and what we call the relative wind, the wind as it's seen by the airplane, is coming straight down the airplane. Let's say that you, um, the right wing tips. Either you bump the control yoke, you have some turbulence, and the right wing goes down just slightly. What will happen is the minute that right wing goes down, the airplane starts to do what's called a side slip. It's literally going sideways for a period of time until, if it's properly designed, it'll get into coordinated flight. But what will happen is the moment that wing goes down and there's a little bit of a side slip, the relative wind, instead of coming straight down, is coming a little bit towards the side of the model airplane. This relative wind coming towards the side of the airplane will hit the lower surface of the wing because it's angled up slightly due to dihedral it'll have a more direct impact on the bottom of the wing less so on this side and essentially what's happening is the relative wind because the side slip creates a higher angle of attack which creates more lift on this side of the wing that just makes the airplane right itself if it's properly designed with the right amount of dihedral. Now, like anything with aircraft aeronautical design, there's pros and cons. There is a downside to the dihedral. The two ones to the downside of di dihedral is because you have a dihedral angle, like on this glider here, the lift vector goes straight up from the wing. Instead of being perpendicular to the airplane, it's uh, tilted in slightly due to the dihedral angle. That just results in a little bit less efficiency of lift because it's not all going straight up for the airplane. The other downside of dihedral, because it induces stability in the roll axis, the plane is less maneuverable. If you have too much dihedral, it's going to be difficult to roll the aircraft, turn it, and properly fly it. But overall, for flying your personal aircraft, for transport aircraft, for normal flight operations, 
Dihedral is a good thing. It keeps the plane stable at roll. It just makes for a better behaving and flying aircraft. Now, when we talk about wing dihedral, we, we, wing dihedral is used a lot, but it's really, wing dihedral is part of a contribution to what is called the airplane's dihedral effect. That means all the components of an airplane that contribute towards the stability at roll for that aircraft. Clearly, wing dihedral is a major contributor to that, but other things like the placement of the uh, tail surfaces, the size of the tail surfaces, where the thrust line is, all contribute to the dihedral effect. Even the center of gravity is an important discussion. When we talk about center of gravity, we just about always think of the center of gravity, uh, the distance back from the nose. Most center of gravities for normal airplanes, straight wing like this, <clears throat> is about 20 to 25% back from the leading edge. The, the plane has to balance at that point, the center of gravity. But the center of gravity also has a component up or down the air, airplane. It's the center of mass for that weight. So for a high wing aircraft, the center of gravity is probably going to be somewhere about here, in other words, below the wing. So because the center of gravity is below the wing, there is a pendulum effect uh, that helps keep the plane stabilized for the dihedral effect. <clears throat> a very good example of this pendulum effect is a paraglider, where essentially the entire center of gravity weight is, before, is below the paracel wing. Also, because the center of gravity for the dihedral effect is in the middle of the aircraft, High wing aircraft typically have a little bit less dihedral than low wing aircraft like a Piper. As I mentioned earlier, with aircraft, as you say dihedral, it assumes a positive dihedral angle, wings going up. There is, There are many aircraft with zero dihedral, typically aerobatic aircraft, uh, like an extra. And there's also um, primarily military aircraft. Some of them have anhedral, where the, dihed where the wings actually point down. These are for unique design considerations of those aircraft. For example, sweeped, uh, swept back uh, wings provide some dihedral effect and roll, and so the plane could be too stable due to swept back wings. In the design process, they need the anhedral or the negative dihedral to have a more maneuverable, more maneuverable airframe. Uh, I know a lot of uh, models, RC models, that have zero dihedral. I'm not sure of too many, if any, that have uh, anhedral except for scale models of the 104. Uh, but not for normal flying. So let's talk about dihedral in your RC model airplanes. Either you're building one, you're converting one from three channels to four channels, you're designing one. Do you need dihedral? And if so, how much do you need? The answer is it depends. As we discussed earlier with the full-scale aircraft, dihedral is a very easy and effective technique to provide roll stability for an aircraft. However, too much dihedral, you can have too stable an aircraft and won't be able to maneuver as much as you want. So going back with RC models and, and the history, to, it's important to look back to that to see where we are today. The very early radio control systems were single channel. That was all the technology allowed. And the channel that you absolutely had to have to control a model was rudder control. These early RC designs were, um, to a large extent, free flight designs that had the rudder to turn them. The, obje uh, the objective of the flights back in those days, late 30s, um, in the 40s, was if you could land near where you took off, that was a successful radio control flight. Because these planes had to be able to right themselves because there were no ailerons controlled, just rudder, you had a great deal of dihedral on these aircraft. As radio systems advanced, you added second channels for elevators, rudders, you could experiment with dihedral. For a fairly long period of time with radio control models, um, late 50s, early 60s, there was debate if you could even fly a low wing radio control model. They felt that the low wing would just not provide enough roll stability um, without ailerons to do that. They eventually designed a airplane with a low wing. It was the Astrohog. It was a pretty popular aerobatic airplane in the early 1960s. It had aileron control, but in those early days of radios, before they had proportional radios, it was what they call a read-based system. And the read-based system, the controls either went full left, full right, full up, full down. You had buttons on your, on your transmitter. So you had ailerons, but as you hit these buttons, the ailerons would either be full left, neutral, or full right. It took real skill to be able to fly these, but you had aileron control through radio control. It just wasn't proportional control. And you had low wing radio control models, but still with a lot of dihedral due to the need for some sort of roll stability. 
as the radios uh, progressed in technology and we had the first proportional radio control systems, now you could really start looking at how much dihedral you needed for an airplane because now you had a very viable approach to aerobatic aircraft, scale aircraft, other options. And so the dihedral was still a very effective technique for a, a roll stability for an aircraft. You'll see in the videos that I'll show that I built a live wire champ, three channels, there's no ailerons, there's a fair amount of um, dihedral because it's needed for roll stability because I don't have the ailerons. Also, you'll see some of my models have zero dihedral, and I'll explain why I do that when we get to those videos. So if you're flying a trainer aircraft, trainers are typically high-wing aircraft. Uh, ailerons are very good to have on that. It's a good idea to have some amount of dihedral on that just to contribute to the stability. And if you fly aerobatic models, zero dihedral is an option. And sometimes it's easier to build a wing with zero dihedral. If that's going to fit your flying style, that is a, a valid design consideration. So let's take a look at five videos of models I've either built, ready to fly, or designed. We'll talk about them. Uh, we will have examples of airplanes with dihedral. We'll have an example of like this Radiant aircraft uh, that has polyhedral, where it's straight here, then there's a, a lot of dihedral in the end. This is very good for roll stability. And this is an interesting example of why you might want to have polyhedral. What the designers wanted to do in this airplane is keep this center section flat because they have a little carbon rod put in here for strength on the wing joint. If they had dihedral right in the middle and the whole wing was um, had dihedral from the center, they would not be able to use this carbon rod. So this is a very good example of having a flat wing in the center section then polyhedral for the dihedral effect as it flies along. So let's look at the videos and I'll give you a... Um, background information on why I use dihedral, no dihedral, and so forth. Let's take a look now at dihedral and some of the planes that I fly. This is a live wire champ that I built. I love it. I wanted something easy to fly, stable, because the original plane had to fly well because it flew on single channel rudder only. You can see there's a fair amount of dihedral on the wings. You can add ailerons if you want. I elected not to do so, but it flies very gently. It's a great uh, airplane just for a relaxing Sunday afternoon and because of the big wing if there's a crosswind I just land into the wind even if it's across a runway. But again a very good example of a three channel design with no ailerons and a little bit of extra dihedral. This is a plane I designed the Bronco. This has zero dihedral. The wing is completely flat. What I did with this foam board design, the foam board is 30 inches wide. <clears throat> I designed the airplane to just keep a 30 inch wing. So for ease of construction, I kept it flat with a single piece of foam board. And that is the size of the wing. Very easy to build and it flies great. This is a ready to fly E-Flight Radiant UM UMX. It's a wonderful little airplane just for goofing around. It has a AS3X for stability. You can see this has a polyhedral on the wingtips, uh, three channels with rudder, elevator, and throttle, but just a very stable flyer, uh, handles well. It's kind of porpoising a little bit because I'm flying as slow as possible for the camera, but a good example of polyhedral in the wings. This is a mini Lazy Bee. I just took some plans off the internet and made them into a 20 inch uh, wingspan uh, model. It's uh, three channels with rudder, elevator, and throttle, <clears throat> but it does have polyhedral and it does a pretty good job of keeping the wings level for this type of uh, small aircraft flying. Hey. Perfect. The Pronto is of interest. <clears throat> this is a 1972 design by Dave Roblin. I have a complete build video on this. The original Pronto in 1972 had three channels or no ailerons and it had a ton of dihedral, about one and a half inches on each panel. As I converted to electric flight and four channels, I reduced the dihedral to about a half an inch and got a very nice, very well handling model. The final one is my most recent design, my first uh, twin engine airplane. Uh, test flew it just a couple days ago. This plane flies great. You can see the takeoff there. This is the maiden flight. The wing is completely flat. There's no dihedral whatsoever. It's a 44 inch wingspan. The foam board is 30 inches, so I had to join at the middle. 
just to make things a little bit easier, I decided to keep it zero dihedral to uh, just make it a little bit easier to build. I knew I'd be on the ailerons a fair amount during flight, but it handles very well nevertheless. Beautiful, man. One other interesting real life story of dihedral in aircraft is the F-4 Phantom. Uh, the F-4 Phantom was a very um, common uh, fighter bomber for the U.S. Uh, Air Force, Navy, and Marines. Uh, back in the early 1960s, it was really the main fighter for all three services. What had happened was when they built the F-4, it originally had a completely flat wing. And as they did flight tests, there was some, sp some spiral instability for the aircraft. And the designers realized we needed to add dihedral to the F-4. The problem was it was designed for carrier operations. They had a very strong center spar section for the wing. They didn't want to go back and redesign that wing center section to put in the dihedral. The F-4 had folding wingtips anyhow for carrier operations to fold the wingtips to allow parking. What the designers did was they just increased the outer tips of the wing. It was an effective technique to provide the roll stability for this fighter aircraft. So in summary, wing dihedral is a very simple and effective technique to provide roll stability for an RC model airplane. If you don't have ailerons, you probably want a little bit of um, extra dihedral on that for roll stability. If you build an aerobatic aircraft, uh, you can have zero dihedral. And if you're flying something like with my twin engine airplane where you're going to be on the controls pretty much all the time anyhow, it's a lot easier in my case for the two full wing panels to join them together with no dihedral. That's what I elected to do. So you do have a range of options and it's good to have background knowledge on what dihedral is and how it can be used to your advantage.